Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 10. We begin this evening with weather from all around the area. Let's begin in Minot. The commute home there late this afternoon was tricky. Their blast of winter came as slushy snowfall, leaving the streets slippery and coating everything white. The snow that's forecasted is supposed to fall more to the north, meaning they might be getting it for a while. A couple of hours ago in Bismarck, the wet snow had stopped falling, but like the Magic City, roads had some slush on them, and with dropping temps, could be slippery. And up in the Grand Forks area at this hour, drivers are dealing with sleet. It started to accumulate a bit, but at this point isn't causing any travel trouble. Now in Fargo, no snow, but there's light rain, and that's been going on for some time. Let's find out what we can expect overnight and tomorrow morning. Robert? Yeah, we'll continue to see that rain from time to time here in Fargo. At times, a few wet snowflakes will be mixing in, but the steadier snow off towards the north and the west, and that pushing off towards the east and the northeast. It's going to be around for a while, already creating some slick conditions, particularly from the Devil's Lake area over towards the uh, Grand Forks area. And now northern Minnesota also getting some accumulating snow. Winter weather advisory, that in effect for much of the area from the Devil's Lake Basin down towards the James River Basin, points off towards the west. Two to four inches of snow likely in this area along and north of Highway 2. One to three inches of snow possible there down in the southern portion of the valley little or no accumulation. It is cold out there with temperatures in the 30s and those winds not as windy as yesterday, but still a bit of a breeze creating wind chills in the 20s in many locations. We'll let you know how long that snow and rain sticks around as we head through the overnight hours and into tomorrow morning. And we'll also let you know how the weekend's shaping up in just a few minutes. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Robert. Mm -hmm. And if you want to keep up with the weather updates, the snow, make sure you have the Valley News Live Storm Team weather app. You'll get the latest forecasts and conditions so that you can plan your day. All you have to do is search VNL Weather in the App Store and download it for free. Four children were injured tonight after the school bus they were riding in rolled. It happened three miles north of Cullum, North Dakota. The Highway Patrol says the bus was on a curve when the wheels lost traction on the slushy road and the bus driver lost control. The bus came to a rest on its roof. There were seven children on board ranging in age from 10 to 13. Four of the kids were taken to the Jamestown Hospital with what was described as minor injuries. The bus driver was wearing a seatbelt. He was not injured. A big announcement this afternoon from U.S. Senator Heidi Heitkamp. Considered by some as a swing vote in the Brett Kavanaugh confirmation, Heitkamp says she will vote no. Heitkamp says she believes Dr. Christine Blasey Ford's allegation that Kavanaugh sexually assaulted her back in high school. Heitkamp also says that with her legal background, it's important to look at what happens when a victim comes forward. One of the most important things you can do for victims, even if as a prosecutor you can't prosecute the crime, is if you believe them to say you believe them. And I believed her. I believed her. And, you know, it doesn't mean that uh, I didn't believe him, but I believed her that it happened. Senator Heitkamp says during the latest hearing, she questioned Kavanaugh's temperament and impartiality, which ended up playing a role in her final decision. The search is over for a missing 16-year-old. Late this afternoon, Morgan Cooley turned himself into authorities. Cooley's the son of Miguel Cooley Sr., who's in jail for the September 23rd homicide near a Fargo McDonald's. And Izetti, Azetta Cooley, 39 years old, who's charged with kidnapping after taking three of her children and fleeing. Izetta and three children were found at a home in Moorhead earlier this week. Morgan Cooley will be under the protective custody of Clay County Social Services. Domestic violence is known for being a problem that a lot of people don't want to talk about, but today crowds came out and raised their voices in support of those who have survived it. Valley News Team's Veronica Marshall spoke to students who took part in a march in Grand Forks about why they want to shatter the silence around domestic violence. Chanting and shouting, more than a hundred people marched to shatter the silence around domestic violence. Senior Peyton Timian says this event opened her eyes years ago, and she hopes it can inspire others now as well. I guess I didn't really think about it a lot before I joined the sorority. Uh, over the past four years, I've learned a lot about it, and it affects one in four women and one in six men in college, which is crazy numbers, and it's too many. Timian has seen the effects of domestic violence, watching some of her friends go through it. 
always hits home because they're my friends and hearing their stories and hearing them share it just kind of makes it more special to me and our whole sorority as a whole. But not everyone is ready just yet to shatter the silence around domestic violence. A lot of students we talked to said they were going to the rally but they weren't comfortable talking about domestic violence showing that silence is still present. I definitely think that staying silent is a huge issue like um, people are going to be worried about being judged like if I stand up what are other people going to think and so I think that if people, you know, just like break that and they're, you know, they have their voices heard and um, they, they just talk about it, it's going to be less of an issue. As the march moves on, and Timian does too, she says events like these make sure the urge to understand domestic violence, its consequences, and how people can help remains constant. I hope that they just realize that there's something that they can do. There's ways that they can get involved and help. And honestly, I don't know that much about it. I'm just really interested in like getting to learn more about it and how it can help in our community. In Grand Forks, Veronica Marshall, Valley News Live. And if you want to help, visit valleynewslive.com and click on this story for ways to help your local shelters. Authorities in Ottertail County need your help finding a man who they say harassed a woman and her five-year-old son at Inspiration Peak, Minnesota. Yesterday evening, the 25-year-old woman reported that after she refused to take a photo for a man, he grabbed her by the wrist. But she managed to break away with her child. The man is described as about 5'10", with a medium build, and about 30 to 40 years old. He was driving a dark blue Chevy Malibu with a model year from the early 2000s. Anyone with information can call the Ottertail County Dispatch Center. Monday marked the deadline for North Dakota school students to get vaccinated. This week in Fargo and West Fargo, 60 students were told they could not come to class because they were not up to date on their shots. The schools tell us it's not up to them. It's up to North Dakota Century Code, which says children must receive immunizations required by the Department of Health in order to be admitted into school. The law sets a deadline of October 1st. Fargo Cass Public Health tells us it's important for us uh, as many to be vaccinated as possible in order to establish herd immunity. If 95% of that community is vaccinated, they are protecting the complete herd. So it's just to everyone's advantage to have more people immunized. The schools say most parents didn't do it intentionally, and just a couple of days ago, uh, out of the 60 kids excluded, only four still have yet to get vaccines. For the second time since June, President Trump visited Minnesota, this time taking part in a rally tonight in Rochester. President Trump hit the stage and yelled to the crowd of thousands that, uh, and this is supposed to be a Democrat state. He told the crowd that Democratic Senator Tina Smith, who is running to fill the final two years of Al Franken's term, quote, took a wacky guy's place. President Trump discussed his America First agenda and the importance of a Republican majority in the House and Senate. Your 401ks will be devastated if Democrats take control and our political system will grind to a really messy halt. And you see what's going on in Congress right now with one of the most respected people potentially, hopefully, Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Hat makers at the rally said they were selling the Make America Great Again hats and sold about 25,000 hats per rally. Later on Valley News Live at 10, whether it's stomach flu, head lice, or pink eye, Consumer Reports looks at a number of illnesses to help you gauge whether you should allow your child to go to school or keep them at home. Rain and snow will continue as we head through the overnight hours, accumulating for some. How long does it stick around into the morning hours, and how's that weekend looking? We'll let you know right after this.